This is awesome. My first Zoom meeting. What? <laughs> on the computer. Yeah, I, I work alone, so I'm sure this is all hat to you guys. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself one at a time? Well, Paul, I'm the CSD at uh, KSHB, uh, the NBC, and KMCI. Um, one of two people on this call who used to work for Robo. So. Um, <laughs> and what was your name? I, I didn't catch your name. Well, maybe I didn't. Uh, Aaron Liversedge. Okay, Aaron. Good yeah. to see you this morning. Yeah, you too, Paul. Hey, I'm Danielle Ray. I'm the Creative Services Director at Fox 4. Jason Holloway. I'm the Creative Services Director for KMBC. I'm Mike Stewart. I'm the CSD at KCTV5 and KSMO. Well, how did this idea come about? So, so I think it started with a, a phone call uh, that Aaron made to me. And uh, I had been uh, talking with my uh, GM about, you know, should we think about doing uh, something with the other stations in town? And, um, you know, we talked about that could be very complicated. And then Aaron calls, and I'm like, well, uh, two stations are in, so let's call the other two and see, uh, see if they're interested. And then it really, it really got a lot bigger from there. Um, you know, once, once Mike and Jason were involved, then we got all the radio stations involved and Telemundo as well. So it was really, really cool to see all the different partners at the different stations come together. Yeah, uh, I think... Uh... I wrote a column about uh, the Houston stations uh, did, did something like this. And, um, you know, I think it's great when we can all forget about our competitive uh, differences and come together for the common good. You know, a lot of, a lot of good things are, if I can say that, are coming out of this uh, coronavirus crisis uh, that I hope um, lasts for a while, uh, the messaging, uh, from the stations, from your departments, has been phenomenal. Um, you know, uh, I mean, really, you know, uh, very emotional, very moving. And uh, I think I said this in one of the articles, I think the collective weight of all of your messaging around the country has really made a difference in viewers' perspective about the uncertainty and uh, lifted them up and uh, supported them, and for that, I, I thank you. You know, I, ha I haven't seen the spot yet, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, so well, with that, go ahead, uh, Jason. I, I'll say uh, you brought up the, the Houston example, and, and there was uh, an example that came out of DC, too, of, of uh, television stations partnering up for messaging to the community. Um, and, and we wanted, to leverage this uh, partnering up to, to do something big for the community. Because uh, I, I don't know that the viewers, they might be aware that we're kind of competition with one another, but, but I don't think the competition is important to the viewer. Uh, and, and so beyond just coming together, we wanted to come together for a cause and uh, uh, use our power as broadcasters to try to cast as wide of a net as possible in, in this fundraising effort. And it wasn't just us that came together. Uh, the Kansas City Regional COVID-19 Response and Recovery Fund itself was a group of organizations coming together to build something that could help everyone right now. And we saw companies across Kansas City come together to provide seed money for this fund uh, so that they could help right now. And we saw charitable foundations come together to do matching funds to help right now. And it was neighbors coming together and our viewers coming together and families coming together. So there, there, were, there was a lot of harmony uh, that we saw in this one day fundraising event. Um, a lot of coming together for the common good. 
and it, it's just something that comes natural to Kansas City. Uh, yeah. But uh, it was something much bigger than any one of our stations. But mm -hmm. when you get our messaging, what you'll see is uh, to a television station and to a radio station, we all handled the messaging on our own because we were all speaking to our audiences. So Danielle was speaking to her audience. Aaron was speaking to his audience. Mike was speaking to his audience. Steve Dunning over at Telemundo was speaking to his audience. And every radio station was handling its own messaging because uh, we, we were speaking out to the people who, who are watching us and, and who already have that relationship with us to say, hey, we're all coming together. Here's the goal. Here's what we're going to try to do. And, and so you'll be getting message. Uh, you'll be getting spots from each of us that look a lot alike, uh, but represent what each of us was doing as a television station for this one effort. Yeah, our thought there is, you know, we all do the news a little differently. We all speak to our respective audiences differently. And so we wanted the stations to have the freedom to do that together. We combined um, our efforts on some, uh, some messaging points. So we were all working from the same, uh, same messages and just delivering those a little differently all in our own ways. It was, uh, it was pretty cool for us to, uh, it was, personally for me, it was cool to see how everybody else was doing it as well. So we were doing our own thing and then watching what everybody else is doing. It was neat to see it all come together a little differently on each station. You know, Paul, the crazy thing is, is that, you know, in many respects, we did something so cool and yet so much of the legwork was literally done from our house. I mean, because I mean, you can see I'm at home, you know, Danielle's at home, you know, Mike's been home, you know, quite a bit. I mean, for our teams to produce this stuff, I mean, we did it all on iPhones and editing in bedrooms. I mean, you know, you know, which, which completely goes, you know, you know, against the norm that any of us, you know, are used to. And, you know, it's completely different than the environments, you know, that we've, you know, you know, worked in and created in, you know, for years and decades, you know what I mean? So just to kind of see the impact um, as we're challenging ourselves creatively to, you know, how do we get the message out? You know, how do we remain relevant? You know, how do we adjust it? You know, and, and then all the technical things about how do we shoot it? How do we edit it? How do we download, upload, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, to, 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 to have this kind of impact, um, you know, you know, and at a time and a place that's even uncertain for us, I mean, is, is, you know, is really quite remarkable. Um, you know, and the fact that, I mean, you're looking at four competitors on the screen right now and, you know, for the most part, you know, we all love each other. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's great. <laughs> yeah. exactly. What's amazing is just how easy this was to get past all our corporate um, groups, our GMs, our news directors. I mean, there wasn't, I didn't ask anyone. They said, well, what is it? What's the other station? What are, it was just, yes, yeah, go for it, let's do it. And, and even the radio partners that we had, the Telemundo station, everyone was just a call or an email. Hey, do you wanna be in this? Oh yeah, sign us up. It, it was crazy how effortless almost this was in a sense, um, at least to get approvals from everyone. And, and especially with all the competition and everything else that we have, it was just, it was just yes all the way. And it was, there, was, there were no speed bumps, it was, amazing in that regard and I think it's really cool that um, this effort started I mean it turned into such a bigger thing but I think it's really cool that this started with the creative services directors here in the market um, all of us coming together and uh, there are a lot of things that, that we do but I don't know if any of us will do something quite as big as this in our careers I mean to raise um, and, and be able to infuse two million dollars into our community at, at a time when they needed it the most is is incredible. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's been really enlightening for all of us to see how easy it was for us to work together. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I was gonna I was gonna speak to that. Aaron, Danielle, and Mike all spoke about uh, workflow and, and how that's changed for us throughout this. One of the things we did share across all the stations were. Uh, calls to action from members of the community and, and a few celebrities uh, like Rob Riggle and, and Tech Nine, a couple of players from Sporting Kansas City. And, and we devised a way to make it to where as those messages came in, all of the stations had access to them all at once and were able to package them up to run on the air as interstitial content and news content throughout the day. 
So uh, for, for a single day, you know, we all have our own workflows, but there was a shared workflow for this cause and, and we were all working with the same materials, the same assets. Aaron and his team put together a logo for this event and some backgrounds that all the TV stations and the radio stations could use. So if you went to a television website or a radio website in Kansas City on Thursday, April 16th, you saw this one KC logo, Broadcasters United, and it was just consistent uh, market-wide. And it, it was really cool to see. Well, hey, you know, why stop now? Think of the think of how easy this would be if you all just got together all the time with news from us. I well, think it definitely think, opens the door for that kind of thing in the future. Yeah, I mean, well, certainly something like this that, um, you know, where you put aside your creative differences, you put aside your competitive differences um, for the common good. I was going to ask about how you pass this by your you know, your superiors, and it sounds like they were, um, you know, it wasn't a big deal. And for that, you know, broadcasters, in my opinion, are amazing. That's why I love my job. Um, I just think there's two sides to broadcasting. There's the corporate side. Their job is to make sure the profits and loss and the stock are one thing. But the people on the ground at the different television stations are all in it for the right reasons. And uh, that's why, you know, I, I've been trying to write about every little piece of news like this one that comes along, every fundraiser, uh, because it needs to be told. It needs to be told. And, you know, broadcasters make a significant difference in their community by doing things just like this. And uh, so uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, how hard is it to uh, work from home? Do you like it or would you rather be, uh, let me say this, I've been working from home for four or five years and while it's okay, I would much rather be in a television station. I miss the camaraderie, the collaborative uh, aspect of it, you know, the fun stuff that happens and the funny people that are around. <clears throat> so what do you folks, how, do you, how have you handled and how hard is it to work from home? Would you like to do it all the time? No, and, and, and <laughs> from from a technical standpoint, we're all making it work, and and that's clear. Just just watching all the stations in Kansas City, we're all making it work. But but you hit the nail on the head, Paul. It's the camaraderie that we miss. I, I, I'll say for for this project, getting to see Danielle, Mike, and Aaron uh, on these Zoom calls uh, has been a highlight of the day just seeing faces and interacting with creative minds and getting to collaborate on something has has just been a blessing I, I think I can speak for the group here it's been a blessing for all of us and and, and that's the part I miss is is sitting at a table and seeing a face across the table um, you, you know, we're, we're figuring out the workflow stuff, we're figuring out the tech stuff and, and, and how to function right now. Uh, but that, that human element is the thing we all love. And, and it's the thing that's missing. It's the thing I can't wait to get back to. You know, it's funny though, Paul, um, you know, in a sense for as weird as it is, um, you know, because I mean, you know, again, all of us are used to buildings and hustle and bustle. And when you literally just walk from your bedroom to your desk and you sit down and start working, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know sure that's a little bit different and unique, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, I found that it's actually caused, you know, my folks to actually be more creative because they have to look at completely different ways in many respects, you know, to get the job done. You know what I mean? And when you're, you know, challenged in environments like this to where you may not have access to every piece of footage because you're not directly connected to a server or something as technical as that. You know, you find different ways to, you know, kind of get the message out there, you know what I mean? Which, which, which I think in this industry is a good thing, you know, and some might say it's needed and a little bit long overdue, you know what I mean? You know, but uh, 
it's good, you know, it's been good to kind of, you know, take the playbook and kind of, kind of write, you know, the next chapter, you know, the next set of plays, because in many respects, you know, you know, we were thrown into this situation in a matter of weeks, you know, and to see it not only succeed, but shine is like, whoa. I completely agree. And, um, you know, I, for one, am very grateful to have a job right now. I'm very grateful to, um, for all, all my employees to have a job right now, be it a little different than it normally is. Um, but I, uh, I attended earlier this week a virtual Promax session that they had uh, that they're offering right now. And one of the things they talked about that Aaron, Aaron's mentioning right there is depatterning. Um, this offer, working from home, being remote, while you know I do love the interaction of a station, it offers an opportunity to innovate and uh, go through that depatterning de process to where everything that we're used to changes, which causes, causes us to change our thought patterns and can really open up our minds to different, uh, different ways of approaching what we do. So I think it's a real opportunity for us right now, and I'm excited about um, what my team's been able to do. I would say for us, it hasn't slowed us down a bit, and it is really, really neat to see um, what your team is capable of, even when you can't interact like you normally do in the TV station. It's been really cool. And I, I do want to say also that I think we'd be remiss on the uh, on the 1KC drive if we didn't uh, also say that our, our news teams did an incredible job yesterday um, getting the message out there and and covering all the different nonprofits that, that could benefit from this drive and all. So, so the news teams, I mean, while it may have started with creative services, the news teams are the ones that really brought it home. Mike, how about you, buddy? I mean, well, as far as working from home, I, I just started coming back to the office a couple of days ago. So I was home for about three weeks and um, yeah, I was amazed how simple it was. Um, Shockingly, I mean, the only thing that was a little harder is grabbing a camera and walking to the studio and shooting a talent or going out on location and shooting things um, with people and, and that type of thing. But um, the working in ho at home environment, I think I sat at my computer longer at home than I would here because you, you walk around in the office, you go visit with people. And so um, I think just laser focusing on work. Uh, which, which was good because it kept my mind off of other things, but, um, and my kids and my wife who were in the house as well. But um, I, I think it's been good. And I think it's amazing that my staff has been able to acclimate so quickly. And they actually amazingly call me or email me and say, hey, what else can I do right now? I feel like I'm not doing anything this hour or whatever it is, you know? So they're actually coming up with work for themselves just to make sure they're occupying their time as well. And um, so, I mean, it's a great testament that we don't always have to be over their shoulders saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? And they're kind of filling out their own schedules every day. Well, I haven't noticed any uh, pets or any kids walking into the, uh, I was hoping we'd have. <laughs> oh, okay. My dog, Winston, is, uh, is nearby oh, keeping uh, posts. Oh, he's Sir impressed. Winston Churchill. Yeah, not impressed with mom working from home. <laughs> Well, I'm very proud. I'm very proud of uh, the four of you and uh, proud of your stations and <clears throat> you should be too. Um, yeah, so Paul, the total that the the total that was donated yesterday was one thousand sixty two or one one million sixty two thousand and eight dollars. And uh, we had two foundations in town, the Hall Family Foundation and Sunderland Foundation that both offered $500,000 each to match each dollar up to a million dollars that was donated. So in the end, that's over $2 million um, that this effort raised. And that is just incredible, overwhelming, humbling, and just speaks to the power of local broadcasters. Yeah. And, and I'll say that uh, speaking with the organizers, that total, uh, was delivered a couple of hours before uh, midnight last night. So th the number was still going up in our late newscasts and, and uh, we'll get a final, final number soon. But yeah, it, it's uh, north of $2 million. So absolutely worthwhile. Uh, there's, there's a need like never before. And Paul, to your point, at at the ground level, as broadcasters, uh, we are all mindful of our place in the community and, and our mission 
to serve our communities uh, by delivering information, but, but also uh, bringing together a, a crowd to uh, support an important cause like this. It's, it's a big part of what we do. And uh, I, I thought it was rewarding to work with the other television stations. I also thought it was great to build that bridge to the radio stations. And, and it's been mentioned, but every radio station group in Kansas City didn't have to think about it. It was just, I'm in uh, across the board. And they did a fantastic job too. I was listening to several of our local radio stations yesterday. They were all talking about it all day long, delivering a tremendous push, and uh, couldn't be prouder of the broadcast community here in Kansas City. Well, this is my first Zoom call. I was a Zoom virgin. <laughs> this is great. I love it. It's, Leave that uh, in the edit, Mike. Leave that in the right. edit. Leave it in the edit, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. I like the idea. Um, I may, you know, incorporate this more often, you know, especially these yeah. days where, um, you know, you, you and your staff are separate. It might be kind of cool to put together, you know, a video conference like this with each of your staffs to, you know, just go through how, and it give you a chance to see what they're really doing at home. Well, so, if, if I could say myself, I think that Kansas City has a very talented group of creative services directors. So, what better market to highlight, right guys? That's right. Not only talented, <laughs> but, but also so handsome. And, and so and, handsome yeah. and attractive. Yeah, exactly. I'm the only one who looks yellow. I don't know. I have to, I have to work on that, <laughs> work on the lighting. Well, anyway, I'll look for the recording. Again, if there's something you wanna, you know, scrub or, or remove, however you deliver it to me, will be how it goes up. Well, okay, and we'll all send you our promos. Yeah, uh, please do. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't be more uh, proud of you guys and, uh, and, and the industry in general. And uh, the messaging, like I say, from around the country has been extraordinary, has really been extraordinary. And, you know, some of them, you know, brought a tear to my eye. And uh, uh, I kind of wish I was, you know, in your shoes so I could be, you know, taking part, taking my part and, and sending out the messages, but it's and not only what the creative services people are doing, but what the news people are doing in finding these little gems of stories of, of how people are overcoming the obstacle of being alone. Well, anyway, um, this has been delightful. I, I've enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time and thanks for all you do. I really appreciate it.